Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Ohio. What do we have on our plate tonight? How about some Michael Bourne? He is heating up, looking to continue his six-game hitting streak for the drive. Meanwhile, Seattle's Kyle Seeger has feasted on Indians pitching in his career, batting 395 against Cleveland. The Indians and the Mariners call the neighbors, get break out the moose repellent. We've got the play-by-play. It's all coming up next. From the beautiful Pacific Northwest in Seattle, Washington, it's Cleveland Indians baseball. Tonight it's game two of this three-game weekend series between the Tribe and the Mariners here at Safeco Field. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. The Indians back on June the 19th had just finished up a series win against the Rangers in Texas. They beat them 17-7. to They were rolling in all faces, pitching offense defense they were fielding the ball much better since then rick the offense has disappeared the starting pitching hasn't been as yeah. good and it's really been a struggle the indians have lost 10 of their last 15 yeah, ball games when you look at the starting pitch and they went two times through the rotation they pitched very well they were scoring they were hitting but you can see five and ten in the last 15 games they are not hitting with runners in scoring position a total of 23 hits in those 15 games and they're not driving in any runs but the starters are not going deep into the ball game their era is is over five and you can see the run support for those starters maybe if you score some a little bit earlier they'll be able to stay in the game a little bit longer it really goes to show you once again baseball is still a team game you need a good start from your starting pitcher but the offense has got to pick up their share of the load the defense has got to kick in we'll see if the indians can play a complete game tonight against the seattle mariners speaking of starting pitching we'll take a look at our matchup tonight as josh tomlin goes for the indians that's next by McDonald's. I'm loving it. 
by your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Buy Paninis. Get overstuffed at Panini's Bar and Grill. And buy Jeep. Visit jeep.com to learn more. A mild but beautiful day here in Seattle. Indians and the Mariners getting ready for game two of their three-game series. Roof is open. Should be a perfect night for baseball here in the Pacific Northwest. Rick, the Indians starting pitching has taken a hit here of late. They need a starter to get deeper into the ballgame. Corey Kluber did a couple of nights ago, and I thought Trevor Bauer did a terrific job getting deeper into the ballgame last night. Josh Tomlin, though, in particular, his first seven starts this year, he never gave up more than three earned runs. And now in his last two, he's given up five earned runs both times. What does he have to do to get back on track? Well, he has one win in the month of June. He has to command the fastball, and he's, he's a pitcher that has to throw everything. For Josh Tomlin, you know, sometimes he may be a little short. He ran into a couple of very good offenses in his last two starts. But Josh Tomlin in this ballpark is 3-0 and in his career, so he should like to pitch up here in Seattle. He's got to go out there. If you can get six solid from uh, from Josh tonight, it would be very good for the Indians because they're going to see a left-hander, Elias, a left-hander that has very good fastball, a good curveball. He's 4-1 and in the month of June, and the Indians are 2-13 and against left-handers on the road, so they're going to have their work cut out for him tonight. Of all the young pitching that the Seattle Mariners possess, some feel Rowenis Elias might be the best of all. It's the Indians and the Seattle Mariners, and the play-by-play from the great city of Seattle is coming up next. Your Northern Ohio Honda dealers by the Cleveland Clinic. Call today for an appointment today. And by the Northeast Ohio Ford dealers. Welcome in to Safe Co Field. The roof is open. Just beautiful. Here tonight, Indians and the Mariners. And the tribe trying to even this series up at a game of peace. Rowenis Elias on the hill getting loose for Seattle. Let's take a look at Terry Franco, the starting nine, brought to you by Progressive. Michael Bourne riding a six-game hitting streak at the top of the order. Then it's his dribble Cabrera, followed by Michael Brantley. Carlos Santana in the cleanup spot, followed by Jason Kipnis, who's really getting hot at the plate. Jan Gomes bat six. Then it's Nick Swisher, Ryan Rayburn, and Mike Avilas. Our GMC starting pitcher, Rowanis. Elias is on the mound, making his start 
number 17, 7-5, seven 374 earned run average. He's had a terrific month of June. He is 4-1, a 321 earned run average. He's got a good fastball, a nice hook, and a changeup. He has induced 14 double plays this year, so you'll see he, he if he's on his game, you'll see a lot of ground balls. And his first pitch to Michael Bourne is inside for ball one. Elias, 25 years old. He'll turn 26 August the 1st. Up high to Bourne, it's 2-0. and 67 degrees, our game time temperature tonight. This is his first start against the Indians. Bourne swings at the 2-0 pitch and fouls it back out of play. Michael Bourne with a six-game hitting streak going 11 for his last 28 at the plate, including three for five last night with a double. Now the 2-1. Reached for it, punches it up the middle, but it's backhanded by Cano. And he'll make the play for out number one. Let's set the key of defense for the Mariners tonight. It'll be Ackley that is in left field, Jones in center, Saunders is in right. Seeger at third, Miller at short, Cano at second, Morrison at first with Zanino doing the catching. Marvin Hudson calling the balls and strikes tonight. The crew chief, Brian Onora, is at first. Adam Hamari at second, Doug Eddings down at third. As Dribble Cabrera trying to snap an 0 for 15. It's a ground ball all fair over the bag at third. Down the line it goes. Cabrera turns on his way to second base and he'll get in there easily with a stand up one out double. Rick that was right down the line and you know, I mean right over yeah. the corner of the bag. I, I think, think that uh, the right side of the ball caught the let me see the right side of that line because it was barely fair. I mean, it almost looked far, but the umpire was right there. So Cabrera will get his 19th double. They had four doubles last night in the ball game, out of their seven hits. This one stuck under the wall, but he gets into scoring position now. So as Dribble Cabrera snaps out of that 0 for 15 slump, and Michael Brantley with the Indians' first chance to drive in a run tonight. Talked about it in the open. We've talked about it so much, I'm tired of talking about it. But the Indians have not been able to come up with the clutch hit, especially in their last 15 games in which they've lost 10 out of 15. Yeah, 244 on the year as a ball club. And Elias came right out with the big breaking ball for strike one to Brantley. Last night the Indians were one for nine with a runner in scoring position and that one didn't come until the ninth inning with two outs right. It was boring. Brantley fourth in the American League in batting average hitting 322. And Elias. With a 92 mile an hour fastball, able to throw it by him. Kind of short arms the ball, so I got a feeling it jumps on you in a hurry. Yeah, coming out in the first, it looks like it's about 91 92. But he has a very good breaking ball, and that was at 78, the first one that he threw to Brantley. There's a curve ball, and he hits it the other way in the left field. Coming around third, Cabrera will try to score. Ackley's throw way offline. In safely is Cabrera, and Michael Brantley with the RBI hit gives the Indians a 1 0 lead. All right, and Michael picked on that breaking ball, taking it the other way. It doesn't surprise you that he gets that hit with a runner in scoring position. And I'll tell you from Ackley, a terrible throw from left field. Well, you know, remember early in his career, he was an infielder. Right. So he's more of a converted outfielder. True. But 
The thing is, when you are converted and you're in left field, the shortest, so you at least have to hit your cutoff, man. You can see that ball sailing. He goes over the head. That allows Brantley to go to second base. Yeah, good point. That's what I'm saying. You've got to at least hit your cutoff, man, to keep the guy at first base. He didn't do it, so the Indians catch a break there. It's almost like back-to-back -back doubles. Right. Indians in business here in the first with a run in. Brantley in scoring position. And sometimes you get that first hit early with a runner in scoring position and it allows everybody to just relax a little bit. Yeah, it loosens things up. It should. Carlos Santana looks at the ball in the dirt. Santana has walked 57 times this year, and that's the second most walks in the American League. Got the batting average up over 200, and that while that may not sound like a big deal to some, when he was batting around oh. 160, you weren't sure if you'd ever get to 200. I don't even look at his batting average anymore. You just look at his production out there. He's been yep. hitting the ball hard, and, you know, he's been getting on base. So forget the average. He plugs the gap here. Left center field. That'll get down. That'll go to the wall. Brantley will score. Santana into second base with an RBI double. 2-0 Cleveland. And that production that you were just talking about nets him his 32nd RBI on the year. Jump right out of the chute. He plugged the gap in left center field. So Indians coming out of the chute on fire today. He hit a ball down. It looked like it had a lot of the plate, but it was down in his zone. And he plugs the gap in left center field. Santana is 11th double. Three straight hits for the Indians. So a good way to come out. It's almost like this is the way they finished last night in that ninth inning. No Santana 24 hits in 70 at bats here in the month of June. And Jason Kipnis looks at a strike. Kipnis is another guy who's been hot right now Rick. I mean he's got seven yeah. hits in his last 16 at bats. Yeah with some extra base uh, doubles. He had two doubles last night. Kip has bumped his batting average 15 points just in the last three games. Elias with the 1 1 and a swing and a miss. Interesting in that offenses have had more success against him first time through. And he has gotten better as he goes along. You would think against a guy that most teams have never seen, most hitters have never seen before. It would be the other way. That it would take you a while and you would figure him out and maybe get better as the game goes along. It's just the opposite, though, with Elias. That's how it usually plays into tougher. Once you see him a couple times, you know what his stuff does. Zanino wants to go out and talk things over. Another ball in the dirt. He made a nice stop there. And Kipnis has worked the count full. You know, you can see Zanino. This is more, that was more of a, hey, let's go. Let's get it together here. Kind of a pep talk. The funny thing is, Elias has pitched better on the road than he has at home. He's five and two on the road. He's two and three here with an ERA of over four. And this is a good park to pitch it. Yeah. I, that's tough to figure. Payoff pitch outside ball four. So four straight have reached with one out of the first inning. And here comes pitching coach Rick Waits. Our keys to the game are brought to you by Akron Children's Hospital. For the Indians tonight, they've already gotten a hit with runners in scoring position. So check that one off the list, though you want to see more of it. And for Josh Tomlin, keep it in the park. And this. This is a good fly ball pitcher kind of a park. Yeah, he, that's why he's 3 and 0 in his career in this ballpark. He's always pitched well. It's funny though, the Mariners have nine home runs in the last five games. They've been hitting a lot of homers here, but this should help Josh Tomlin. Give him a couple runs early. Let him go out there and get his feet wet. He doesn't have to be perfect. Jan Gomes with a hit in seven of his last eight games had his hitting streak snapped last night with an 0 for 4. Got two on with one out. No 
Nobody there at the bag as Santana has looked back. Outside, up and away, ball one, and you can see that Elias is frustrated. He snapped the ball back with his glove on the throw. He's He's not able to command the baseball here and at the outset. That's right. And the Indians are under his skin. They didn't let him settle in. After he got Borney to ground out. They, uh, he has been pitching with runners on base. One thing that you and I both know about Rick Waits. One of his strengths. Is having a very calming influence. So when he went out to the mound I'm sure. All he was trying to do was get Elias to take a deep breath, relax. Hey, big boy, you're fine. You've got the good stuff. But it doesn't seem like he can get himself into any kind of a rhythm here. Having a tough time locating his fastball. Ripped foul. Boy, he had a good cut. Yeah, you get into hitters' counts like that, boy, they're going to put a good swing on it, whether they faced you before or not. They're sitting one pitch. And Gomes was sitting on the heater. Six right handed bats in the starting lineup tonight for Terry Francona. Of course, you've got Cabrera, Santana, and Swisher that are switch hitters. Gomes, Rayburn, Avilas, all pure right handed bats. Two one. Chase one in the dirt. But this is the lineup that has to, has to do a better job for the Indians if they have any hopes of contending. This year, because left-handed pitchers have just given them fits. Well, they certainly have on the road. I mean, they're seven and three at home and two and thirteen on the road. You know, that's two hard. And yeah, two and thirteen when they're when they're on the road against left-handed starters. Nine and sixteen on the year. That's something that they did very good last year. They they were able to beat the left-handers. Two-two pitch. Right back to. Elias, he goes to second for one on the first and inning ending double play. So he gets out of any further trouble, but the Indians are on the board first. They lead it two to nothing. The Mariners are coming to back. Lineup is brought to you by Toyota. Andy Chavez will lead it off, followed by James Jones, then Robinson Cano batting third, Kyle Seeger, Logan Morrison, and Mike Zanino, the lone right handed batter in the lineup, hitting sixth. Michael Saunders, Dustin Ackley, and Brad Miller. GMC starting pitchers Josh Tomlin. Josh is four and five this year with a 439. He's lost his last three starts, but he has pitched very well against Seattle in his career. He's three and one, and in this ballpark, he is three and zero oh in his career. Ah! 
Called strike on the outside corner. Chavez was two for four last night, and he had a big home run. It made a, it made it a three to one game for Seattle, and the Indians would ultimately fall one run short. Yeah, and that was his first home run on the year. McClendon joking around after the game, saying, "Yeah, I knew. I put my DH up there to hit a home run." <laughs> Well, he knows he didn't have one all year long, but he likes him at the top of the lineup to go along with Jones, who's hitting second. And starting games this year, he is 10 for 16 when leading off a ball game, like right here. And he had a base hit last night. It was an infield hit. You remember Cabrera had to go to his right, and he wasn't able to throw him out. The 2-2. Two -two. Foul back out of play. James Jones waits on deck. Michael Bourne reached out and snared it for out number one. Boy, Bourne and Brantley were converging. And I'm guessing Bourne called for it because Brantley sort of peeled off right at the very end. Well, they were on a collision course because that ball wasn't hit hard. It was off the end of the bat. And I think you're right. Michael ends up calling it. I mean, they're joking. Either one of them, I believe, could have caught that ball. But, you know, if you're the center fielder, you have to try and take charge. And Bourne on the dead run, he ends up making the play. It's okay. It's caught. I'm guessing Michael's laughing because, Rick, he had an easy beat on it. It was going to be an easy play for him. But right. Borney probably didn't realize he was that close Since to you it. you want to call it? You better catch <laughs> it. He's laughing because he could have been underneath it. Now James Jones ah! taking a strike. Tomlin. Gets a hit now. No balls, two strikes. Up and away. Breaking ball and Jones fouled it. Count stays a ball and two strikes. Another foul back. Jones was one for four last night. He's batting 280. And this is, uh, you know, the first two guys you want to keep off in front of Cano. This guy can run a little bit. On the infield, and Cabrera will grab the pop up for out number two. Let's check the uh, Kia Indians defense behind Tomlin this evening. It'll be Brantley in left field. Bourne is in center. Rayburn in right. Avilas uh, gets the start at third. Cabrera is at short. Kipnis at second. Swisher is at first. Gomes doing the catching. Here's Robinson Cano. Ah! Cano is seventh in the American League and hits with 94. But he trails Michael Brantley in the batting race. He came into the day sixth. Brantley was fourth. He has 29 multi hit games as well. And don't look now, but. In perhaps 
just a few more games Lonnie Chisenhall will have enough plate appearances to qualify and if he continues to hit he'll be leading the league in batting average. Fouled right back. One and two to count on Cano. Tomlin deals. Strike three call. Josh Tomlin with a one, two, three first inning. And he gets Cano looking to end the frame. After one, it's the Indians two and the Mariners nothing. inning. Bottom third of the order due up for the try. Nick Swisher, Ryan Rayburn, and Mike Avilas. I'm sure Nick right now is probably thinking if it weren't for bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. Hit a ball hard last night and hit the starter right in the foot. And it dropped down right at his right below his feet. And you know, all he had to do was pick it up and throw him out. And he also got thrown out on a bizarre play, trying to go first to third. I yeah. Mean, he's scuffling right now. But he maintains that upbeat attitude. One down for Ryan Rayburn. Pitch up and away for ball one. Rowenis Elias was born in Guantanamo, Cuba. He defected to Mexico in October of 2010. And the Mariners eventually signed him in May of 2011. This was not a guy like Joanna Cespedes or Yasiel Puig or even uh, Jose Abreu. This was not a guy that was highly touted and everybody was frothing at the mouth waiting to see if, in fact, he would come to the United States eventually to play baseball. But man, he has made the most of his opportunity since he was spotted by a Mariners scout at a tryout camp in Monterey, Mexico. 
Well, yeah, he doesn't light up the radar gun or anything. And this is the first time the Indians have faced him. But just from the people we've talked to and seen him pitch a couple of times on TV, yeah, we see he's got a nice curveball. He's got a good changeup. And he's 91 or 92 for a left hand. Hard hit ball to third. Nice play by Seeger. And he flips it over for out number two. Time is running out to vote for your 2014 MLB All Stars. You can help send your favorite Indians like Michael Brantley to the All Star game by voting at Indians.com. Vote exclusively at Indians.com or on your mobile phone. Voting ends Thursday, July the 3rd, just before midnight. Mike Avilas will bat with two down and takes a strike. Elias says his decision to defect from Cuba was just a spur of the moment thing. He did it in large part to give his family a better life through baseball. But it was a boat ride that lasted almost 30 hours wow. on a crowded raft with a couple of dozen others, including five baseball players. And he has not seen his family in four years since he left. His parents, a brother, and two sisters. And he said, quote, when asked about it, I feel alone and depressed at times. I think about them, but once I defected, there's no going back. Yeah, right. And the first goal once he left Cuba was to make it to the big leagues. The one two pitch. And the one thing Lloyd McClendon knows and Rick Waits knows that no matter the situation, no matter the perceived pressure, what this young man has been through makes anything on a baseball field like a walk in the park. Yeah, you would think so. You certainly would think so. Now the 2-2. And it was close. And a full count. Well, he took one in there that, you know, that was called a strike earlier in the at-bat. And you can see that breaking ball. Now, that must have been high. Yeah. And the payoff pitch. Avilas hits it high in the air to left center. Jones, the center fielder, is there. And the Indians go one, two, three. We'll go to the bottom of the second. Cleveland two, Seattle nothing. Tribe fans sprinkled throughout the ballpark. Kyle Seeger, Logan Morrison, and Mike Zanino do up for the Mariners.
Kyle Seeger's having a terrific campaign this year. He's batting 274, dozen homers, leads the Mariners with 55 runs batted in, which, by the way, is tied for eighth most in the American League. You look at him and you wouldn't say, well, there's a four hole hitter if I've ever seen one. Well, yeah, he just doesn't look like one. He's not a big guy. He's not, uh, you know, what you would think powerful. He's done a nice job with production. Stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Here's the 2 0 pitch. And it's in there for a strike. I think what's impressive about Seeger is that at home he is just lighting it up. He's got the third best home batting average in the league at 353. Well, you could hit him anywhere in the lineup against the Indians, and he'll be fine. He rockets one to deep right field. Rayburn with a terrific catch. Wow. Oh, baby. Ryan Rayburn on the dead sprint reached up and stole extra bases away from Kyle Seeger, and that is about what it takes to slow this guy down against the Indians. That is a big league play. This is going to be our McDonald's. I'm loving it because I do love it. Watch this energy effort, and he's able to hold on and take a hit away from Seager. That is just a super play by Ryan Rayburn. Well done. I looked in that dugout. Everybody's sitting in there clapping, and they should be because that is a great catch. And Talman, thumbs up, bro. Well, especially when you're not getting everyday playing time and you go out there here and there to play the outfield. That's a dead sprint. Go get yeah, him kind of a play. A tough play on the backhanded side. And of all people, he takes a hit away from Seager. That's that's even better. Logan Morrison was two for four last night. Josh uh, coming out after the Indians scored that two in the top half of the first. You know, for Tomlin, he's had a tough time with shutdown innings. That was his first out of 13 and a 1 2 3 shutdown inning to close that uh, other team down. He had an ERA of over nine after the Indians have put runs on the board when he had to go back out there and try and shut them down. Bouncing ball, and that's his dribble Cabrera who gets the room service hop with the yeah. shift on, two down. Got the Sunday hop on Saturday. Let's go down to Katie with him. She's got more on Josh Tomlin. Well, Matt, you and Rick mentioned Josh Tomlin coming off his third straight loss. First time for him since 2011. His coach earlier today, Mickey Calloway, explained why he's seen Josh Tomlin struggle. Uh, he's not feeling great mechanically, so we've been working on some things in between stars to really make sure that he's more consistent with his mechanics so he can locate the ball where he wants to. It's like one or two main pitches that are really hurting him and leading to, you know, crooked numbers on the scoreboard. So, you know, when, when he struggles, he's got to go up there and be able to do some damage control and make sure it's only one or two, two runs instead of four or five. Mickey, Mickey Calloway with our Here Right Audiology Sounds of the Game. Thanks, Katie. Well, and... and Tomlin is. He, he's a guy that has to be finely tuned. In his last start against Detroit, he went the shortest distance of the year at just four innings. But his defense didn't help him. He, he allowed two runs in the first four innings and then was tagged with six runs. But three of them were unearned because the defense faltered. And, you know, here's a guy, he, he throws strikes. you got to make plays behind him. His, you've got to keep the ball in the ballpark for Josh. He's given up four home runs in his last three starts and a lot of hits. Another one, two. Swing and a miss. Tomlin with his second strikeout, and he's retired all six Mariners to start the game. And it doesn't help, or it doesn't hurt, to get a little help from your defense.
two nothing in favor of the Indians. Tribe was uh, here in Seattle last year in uh, July, July 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. This year, they make the trip a month earlier. A month earlier, and it'll be tomorrow. Tomorrow's ball game will be the official halfway point of the season. Yeah. 81st game for the tribe. Michael Bourne pops it up on the infield. The shortstop Miller. Ball away. Time now for a Mazda game break. Here's Al Pulaski. Boy, it looked like the Astros had that baby. Yep. They were up two to one, and the bottom fell out for him. Cabrera banks it to third. No double this time. Two down. Has settled down a little bit after getting that ground ball double play to end the first inning. Pitch outside for ball one. Really pitches off the extreme first base side of the rubber. That would create some angles for left handers. I thought it was interesting too, Rick, when Elias came to the Mariners. He was obviously a, a raw and an unfinished product. And it doesn't happen overnight to, to polish off maybe some of the rough edges. Even Lloyd McClendon, who's in his first year as manager of Seattle, said. First time he saw him, he said, I think he had five different arm slots. <laughs> and he said, I asked him why, and he said, because I'm from Cuba. <laughs> oh, so he's supposed to have it, like Louis Tion or somebody. And even El Duque, remember, he had all the herky jerky, oh, yeah. and he would throw it sidearm, three quarter arm. Right. But be able to throw it from anywhere. McClendon felt like for him to have success, they needed to find a more consistent, maybe, release point, and which makes sense. Can't argue with the results. Well, what do you hear every big league pitcher talk about is repeating your delivery, you know, so you can be consistent and you can pound the strike zone. Ground ball up the middle, backhanded by Cano. And the Indians go one, two, three, and Elias really settled in again. He has retired seven in a row.
half of inning number three. And a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to stay tuned later in the game for Miller time brought to you. Michael Saunders to lead it off. Two for four with a double in his first game last night since coming off the DL. Tries to bunt here. Interesting. Well, Tomlin throws him out one away. Trying to get something going, but don't try it off Tomlin. He fields his position well. Injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. And Justin Masterson will not make his scheduled start tomorrow. We knew that for some time. TJ House. Has been called up and he'll make the start tomorrow for the Indians. So Masterson back on Tuesday in LA. So there certainly can't be anything really wrong with that knee if he's coming right back. Let's go down to Katie. Katie Terry Francona said that. You know, Ma Masterson tells him he feels pretty good. He does feel good, Matt. He actually threw his first side session today. 35 pitches, used all of his pitches. Mickey Calloway said not only did he look good, but his knee looked very good. He was able to generate a lot of power, was very intense. So barring any setbacks going forward, Matt, he will definitely start on Tuesday in L.A. All right. Thanks a lot, Katie. And, you know, Justin... <laughs> Look, he's been a favorite of ours. We, we like his attitude um, and the, the fact that he's he sometimes is not afraid to have some fun with the media. When he when he when they were asking the other day, the writers were asking him about the injury. And has that been a reason for the way he's pitched this year? He says, I don't know. I can't say yes and I can't say no. He said, we all have nagging injuries. It's been there. It's something that's starting to bother me, but it's not been real extreme. But he said there's been inconsistencies that something he's going to have to overcome this year at some point if he wants to get his season turned around. Yeah, Popped up foul and back out of play. That goes hand in hand with the Indians. When cool. You've got guys. I mean if you want to get yeah. on a roll and then the, for example the Mariners uh, over their last 20 series they've uh, this is their 20th series not including this one but they've won 11 of them and they've lost four and they've split three but you have to win the series. And to do that, you need consistent pitching. You need your guys, your starters, to go out there and get on a roll. That's why their bullpen has been so good here. The Indians have to do that if they want to get back and get into the, uh, you know, to play. And you're going to have to try and catch Detroit. They haven't been able to, winning the series is the key. Michael Brantley is going to make the catch in left field. He does. And Josh Tomlin, nine up, nine down. Through three, it's the Indians two and the Mariners nothing.
Just a reminder to tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STO fan photo for a chance to have them shown during one of our telecasts this year. It's all courtesy of AT&T. Fourth inning, Indians lead it 2 to nothing. Carlos Santana will lead it off. He drove in a run with a double in the first. To pick up on the point you were making before we went to break there about the the inconsistency, you know, Masterson mentioned it with regard, with regards to his own performance, but you said as a whole, that's something the Indians have been dealing with as a team. Let's just go back to the stretch they had beginning on May 30th at home against Colorado, where they won nine out of ten games. Right. In that ten game stretch, there were seven times where the Indians scored five runs or more. Seven times. Well, they were averaging five like runs or more. Five or six runs a game in that stretch, yes. And four of those nine wins were earned by the starting pitching staff. In their last 15 games, they've lost 10 out of their last 15. 11 times they've scored four runs or less. Right. And the starting pitchers have gone one and eight. They've been tagged with eight losses. So you can't hang it on, well, the pitching's been bad. You can't just hang it on, well, the. The Indians aren't, aren't hitting. It, it's been, unfortunately, a collective failure, well, it just as it was is. a collective success when right. they got hot before that. And that's how the season usually goes. You feed off each other. You do it as a team. You win as a team. You lose as a team. And that's what they said last year. That's what Terry Francona says. Hey, we need everybody in this dugout to pull their own weight. And that's exactly what they need. Jason Kipnis takes a look at the ball outside. Every year is different. Every year you have to build a new identity. You can't live off last year. Oh well, they were the they were the the two out guys. They would strike with two outs. They scored a boatload of runs when they had two outs, nobody on. They they got a lot of base hits when they had two outs and runners in scoring position. This year it hasn't been the same. Strike over the outside corner and it's two and one. You know, when you look at the run differential for the Indians on the year, they're down minus 23 for run differential. So that means they've been outscored by 23 runs against their opponents, and they're still right around the 500 mark. But when you look at uh, Seattle, what are they, seven or eight games over 500? Seattle, they're six games over 500. They're plus 52, which is second best in the league. And they trail only. The Oakland Athletics are in a, a, a you know a different stratosphere. They have outscored their opponents by 133 runs. Oh my! Kipnis didn't like that. It's a full count. Well, I mean that's that to me. You know, you always talk about well, you got to. That's the name of the game. I mean, when you when you can shut down the opposition, you don't have to lean on your offense as much. Which is why the old adage goes if you've got good pitching you're in every yeah game. you should be in every ball game and you'll be in a lot of close ones and it's finding a way to win those close ones. And I think too Rick let's not let's not forget the current state of baseball. Offense is down yeah. so if you can pitch you're going to have an opportunity this isn't the mid 1990s where you know, teams were still scoring a boatload of runs. That snaps a string of eight in a row retired by Rowenis Elias. Well, he has two walks, and both walks have come off while Jason Kipnis was the hitter. Now Jan Gomes banged into a double play that ended the first inning.
Now we talked last night about how Lloyd McClendon said that Chris Young has been a godsend for his team this year because of the slack he's been able to pick up from the injuries in their pitching rotation. Where would they be without Rowanis Elias? You can almost say the same thing about him because at the start of the year, not only were they down Taiwan Walker, but Iwakuma missed time right. early this year too. So they, they were missing two of their big dogs in the starting rotation. And both Chris Young right there and the young man we're watching tonight, the left hander, the Cuban native, Elias, have really saved the day for Seattle. Isn't it funny how people take turns stepping up, you know, throughout the course of the year? And this is another pitcher like we showed you young last night with all of his innings and the few hits. Coming into tonight, Elias was at 98 two thirds innings. He's up over 100 now, but 83 hits, less hits and innings pitched. I'm sure Lloyd McClendon could not have told you back in March that our bullpen is going to be dominant this year. One-two pitch, line toward right field, right at Saunders. Two down. I'm sure he liked his bullpen. I'm sure he felt good about it, but. Could he have told you it was going to be this dominant? No, no way. Uh, no, because uh, they feed off each other, and, and that's something you can't predict. Bullpens are very scary. One year to the next, you just never know what you're going to have when it comes to a bullpen. It's so hard to predict. But right now, Lloyd McLennan has been using that bullpen. Last night, I. Hey, it, it always looks good when it works. Let's yes, it let's not forget that. But he made masterful use of his bullpen last night when he only got five innings from his starter. But well, that was the basic five and fly last yeah. night. But when your bullpen's been pitching like they have, under a two ERA in the last forty games, what is it? One sixty-six in the last 40, forty games, mind you. Talking half their season to this point. Uh, you you can go ahead and take chances. With a five and fly. Here's Nick Swisher. Tap one back to the mound. His first time up. Indians on top two to nothing. They strung together three straight hits off Elias in the first inning. A double over the bag at third by Cabrera. A hard smash to left field on a breaking ball by Brantley. And then Carlos Santana gapped a double to left center. They don't have a hit since though. Upstairs. Ball to short. We go the long way for the out. And we get it. Inning is over. We'll go to the home half of the fourth. Two nothing Cleveland.
Um, news and notes from the NHL draft. Sam Amico's latest Cavs report and video of the Cavaliers' Joe Harris being drafted. It's all on FoxSportsOhio.com. Josh Tomlin will go to work on the top of the order. Turned out to be a beautiful night here in Seattle, didn't it? You're not kidding. First time through the order, Tomlin six out of nine first pitch strikes. He's up high ball one to Indy Chavez who flied to center. Back in inning number one. Well, he uh, looks like he's under control. So whatever they were working on with Mickey Callaway and him in his side session. I mean his off speed pitches they seem like they're crisp they're sharp. We've seen the curveball. We've seen the good change up. And he's been able to get that fastball inside. A couple of times. And that's that's the key with Josh Tomlin and anybody that's not overpowering. You still have to prove to hitters you can uh, throw that fastball inside. Get in on them. Command both parts of the plate. Breaking ball, he's able to lay off. See, that's his chase pitch right there. And I think in the last couple of games, a lot of times hitters have laid off Tomlin's curveball. That he when he gets ahead of him, throws it in the dirt. Popped in the air, left field. Michael Bull Brantley uh, is there to make the catch. And that is out number one. Well, 12,500 fans are going to get a Jason Kipnis bobblehead. That'll be courtesy of First Energy, July 8th. The New York Yankees will be in town, and it'll be Derek Jeter's last trip to Cleveland. So visit Indians.com for your tickets. Trying to bunt his way aboard. Jones gets down a beauty. Tomlin quick release. And they got him at first base. All right, but Swisher did over there as well. He got that throw and got off the bag. You see, it was almost like a double clutch for Josh where he came over and he, he, he picked it up, but he got it there. Second guy trying to bunt on Tomlin. He's got both of them. It was Saunders and now Jones. Field your position. He does just that, and he gets him when he was on the way down. Man, Swisher's getting that toe out of there because he doesn't want to get stepped on. Look at left-hander. That's why that left-handed first baseman snag it and get out of the way. Well played on both ends, as you pointed out, Rick. I mean, Tomlin's so steady. And, and there's another great example of a guy who you have to be quick, but make sure you execute. He didn't hurry it. He didn't rush it and make yeah, a bad be throw. Be quick, but don't hurry. Yeah. Robinson Cano called out on strikes his first time up. Now that's all part of being a, a starting pitcher. You like to see your pitchers, once you release the ball, become a fielder, a good fielder as well. Because you help your own game when you're out there, when you can make the plays like that. We see how many guys do you see panic when they see a ball on the infield. Worst thing that happens, it's a single. I mean, right. You compound it when you throw yeah. it away. Well, I remember a play right here in Seattle many years ago. It was a bunt play. John Rocker came off the mound for oh, Cleveland. Boy. Went to throw it to third and threw it all the way down in the left field corner. Cost him a ball game. One two pitch. Bounce it in front of the plate. Of course, I also remember a game right here when Omar Vizquel went to the plate late in the game and he asked the umpire for oh. Arthur Rhodes to remove the earrings from his ear. You remember ears. that. And then Omar got him, and Arthur Rhodes never forgave him. The 2 2 pitch. Foul back. 
This is the best at bat by far that we've seen from Cano in the series. He is 0 for 5 to this point with a couple of strikeouts, but he's got a different look to him in this AB. Well, he was out early today. We were here uh, before batting practice, and he was taking some extra batting practice. He got him to go fish. Tomlin strikes him out, and that's the third K for Josh tonight. 12 up, 12 down, through four, 2 nothing Cleveland. Brought to you by Sunnyside Toyota, a quarter mile west of the Great Northern Mall on the North Homestead Auto Mile. By Levin Furniture, for the best deals on furniture and mattresses, shop Levin. And by Kia, visit ikeacleveland.com to learn more. Ryan Rayburn leading off the fifth inning, takes a strike. Rayburn grounded the third his first time up. And made a whale of a catch out in right field to take a hit away from Seeger. I was going to say he's already had a big impact on this game, especially given that it's a two to nothing score. Because if he doesn't make that play, Seeger's probably standing on third base to lead off the second. Yeah, inning. it's a yeah. You're right. Because when you dive, catch it, right. he's got to get up then and chase it. This was the fantastic play. In case you missed it earlier. You know, whether you're playing every day or not, this is just an outstanding play. I mean, on the dead run. Definitely over his head, and he just threw his glove up there, and boy, it went in. And his pitcher is very happy. Borny was happy. Every Cleveland Indian fan was happy. Downstairs from Elias. But you talk about the, the, the guys that got to get going and, and play well. Ryan Rayburn's one of those guys against left handed pitching. He had a big impact last year for this ball club. He swung the bat very well. He hit the long ball. He just. Uh, he never stopped all year long. Strikes out here. First strikeout for Elias tonight. One down in the fifth. Our in game recap. Brought to you by Toyota. Michael Brantley with an RBI single in the first inning. Three batters into the game. It was 1-0 Cleveland. Next man up, Carlos Santana gapped it to left center field. That brought home Brantley. And that has been it so far. Well, we talked about it last night. When you come in here, this is pretty much the way you think these games are going to go. Low scoring uh, with their pitching. With the way Seattle pitches, they're second in the league in ERA. So you don't think you're going to see a whole lot of runs. Mike Avilas with a line drive base hit in the left field. And the Indians have their first hit since the RBI double you just saw a moment ago from Carlos Santana back in the first inning. Boy, Mike went down and hit a nice pitch. That one just had played. It was down. It was a lot like the pitch Santana hit in the gap in left center field. 
Looked like a fastball down. They both dropped a bat head on it. So the fourth hit for the tribe. Bourne looks at the ball outside. Well, the folks down in the Rubber City saw quite a ball game tonight. At the home of the Akron Arrows at Canal Park, Bryce Harper on a rehab appearance for the Washington Nationals affiliate Double A Harrisburg. He went four for five tonight against Akron and hit three home runs. <laughs> they better call him up after a game like that. I think he's ready to go. <laughs> I think that's what he's trying to say. We'll have to put in a call to Dave Wallace, the rubber, you know, the rubber Ducks manager down there. How great would that be? You go down and get a chance to see him play. You know, he had the uh, surgery on his thumb, similar to what happened to uh, Josh Hamilton. Diving head first into a bat. Sure, Matt Williams will well, be anxious to get him back into their lineup. No question. If they're going to make a run. 3 1 pitch to Bourne. Bounce foul, full count. Washington is tied with Atlanta. Identical records of 41 and 38. Three games over. But Washington has lost three in a row. Let me see what they did. Oh, they won tonight. So they snapped that string. They swept a double dip today against the Cubbies. And then to add good news about Harper, the yeah. game he had. Runner goes. 3 2 pitch. Line to right center field. That's going to get down to Vilas on his horse. Coming into third base, they'll wave him home. He'll score. And the Indians go up three to nothing. Michael Bourne with an RBI double. Extending his hitting streak to seven games. It's his 20th run driven on, on the year and his eighth double this season. Yeah, Michael has been hot. He has been hot. They started Avilas and uh, Bourne finds the gap in right center field. He got a fastball. It was middle in. You could see Zanino. He was getting up ready to throw the baseball, but he's never going to catch it because Bourne hits it in the gap. So if Villas can come around and score for Michael Bourne, that'll be his eighth double. And he remains hot. Now is Drupal Cabrera. Takes a strike over the outside corner. That's their third double tonight, Matt, out of their five hits. I mentioned they had four yesterday. Well, it's just impressive to see what the Indians have been able to do against the left-hander, too. Yeah, that is a good sign. Well, you've got Brantley with a hit. From the left side, you've got Borney now with a hit from the off the left hander, and then the three righties have the hits: Cabrera, Santana, and Avilas. High in the air, and slicing out a plate on the right side. Of course, those uh, hits by Bourne and Brantley both RBI hits. And we talked about that a lot yesterday. The Indians. Just couldn't get the hit with a runner in scoring position to help their cause. They, they finally got one in the ninth, but one for nine in the game. Check swing foul. Indians to this point two for three with a runner in scoring position tonight. Avila is able to score all the way from first base on the double by Bourne. Oh. 
And there's a balk by Elias, and that's going to send Michael Bourne to third. And so even though Cabrera is down on the count 0 and 2, a chance to get another run home here, and uh, it will force the Mariners to bring the infield in. Yeah, he started. There it oh, is. He, he dropped, dropped the ball. ball. He tried sure to did. cover it up, but good try. Didn't work. Now they got to bring the infield in. So two strike pitch. And his dribble fights it off. For the Indians, Matt, this is just the fourth time in their last 16 games that the offense has been able to give a starter three runs. That helps. Remember we talked about sometimes the starters can't hang in there long enough. And this is a big run out there now with just one out. Make it four. Cabrera drives one to deep left field. Ackley back. And he'll make the over the shoulder catch. But Bourne tags and comes home to score. So the Indians take advantage of the balk. Cabrera does his job getting that runner home from third. Good fundamental baseball for the Indians here. And they make it a four to nothing ball game. That's even better. That's their 30th sacrifice fly as a team, which is second best in the league, which is nice. Good job. They get him over with the ball. Well, that's uh, that hurts. That hurts Elias. And now two down bases empty for Michael Brantley, who is one for two tonight. One ball, one strike. Bouncing ball up the middle. Cano with a nice backhander. Had trouble getting it out of his glove, but he is able to retire Brantley to end the inning. But the Tribe scores two more. An RBI double by Bourne, a sack fly by Cabrera. 4 0 Cleveland. A celebrity softball game Thursday, July 17th, the Classic Park in Eastlake. A special event. We got a home run derby at six, then the softball game at seven. You can take photos, get autographs from the players. It's a great interactive event. Log on to CaptainsBaseball.com for more information. There is pitching coach Rick Waits of Seattle with Rowenis Elias in between innings. Meanwhile, Josh Tomlin goes back to work. 
facing Kyle Seeger who was robbed of a hit his first time up in the second inning on a terrific diving play by Ryan Rayburn in right field. We showed it to you a little while ago. And Seeger lines one in the left field. It's the first hit of the game for Seattle. And they get their leadoff man aboard to start the bottom of the fifth. So he had retired the first 12 in a row to start the night. Well, he goes the other way this time. There was a pitch. Uh, it looked like he was going that way. Oh, he was sinking left field the whole way. And a pretty good piece of the plate, but he just takes it to left field. First hit for Seattle. And there it is officially on the board. Now Logan Morrison grounded the short. His first time up, but he didn't hit it to where the shortstop normally is. The Indians employ a shift for Morrison and then when he grounded out he hit it to the second base side of the bag but that's where as Drupal Cabrera is standing. So here's the weird thing if he hits one to Cabrera right now be a tough double play turn because as Drupal's got nobody to pitch it to right he's going to have to just go to second base and get one popped up foul and out of play. Now if Morrison gets to two strikes presumably Mike Avilas would then shift over and then maybe you'd have an opportunity to use him as your pivot man. Well while we were talking and before that first pitch an awful lot of communicating going on between Avilas and Cabrera and the infielders because of this shift. Letting know who's got what where when if the ground balls coming. Quick throw to first. Now the old one to Morrison. A little bit inside. Indians with two in the first, two more here in the fifth. Kyle Seeger with the first hit of the night for the Mariners, leading off this inning. Driven to deep center, board over. He'll make the catch. And he'll drive Seeger. Back to first base. Well, I understand that earlier today the players had to put in uh, their votes for the All Star. Oh, oh, yeah. And Katie with them has more on that. Katie, who, who do you think the guys were voting for today? Well, it was interesting, Matt. I asked a, a number of them in the clubhouse in all of baseball who do you think deserves to go? And the unanimous vote was for their teammate Michael Brantley. They went on to say he does everything. He hits for average, hits for power, plays extraordinary defense, and controls the run game. They said he may not be the most popular vote, but at this point in the season, he's definitely the most deserving of a vote. So they're, they're allowed to vote for their own players then, I take it. This is a democracy after all, right? Well, you're you know, I, I didn't know if you're, you know, sometimes they have those things. You're not allowed to, you can vote for anybody but somebody your own on guy? your own. Yeah, your own guy. Uh, you can vote for your own team. Okay. I believe. In fact, Lonnie Chisinau jokingly told me that he voted for himself and then <laughs> Well, you know what? What's wrong with that? That's There's right. nothing wrong with Which that. Which I, yeah, exactly. Another guy who's very deserving. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to vote for myself because I like me. Well, if you were <laughs> running for class president, would you not vote for yourself? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now, I, I don't think there's any question Michael Brantley is very He's deserving yes, to represent is. this club. And Without a doubt. 1-0 pitch from Tomlin. Swing and a miss. I mean, I think it would be great if... If the Indians could get more than just one guy, I mean, Lonnie Chisinau's had well, a fantastic you know, year. When you and, think and about that, and, and you know the way the fans vote, they vote for the starters, and then the, then you have all the fans vote. What there's uh, the last week, the internet, you got yeah, five right, people to right. vote for one, the lo the last player, and then the manager picks some. I mean, Swing and a miss. 
Tomlin gets ahead of Zanino one and two. And I'm, I'm not kidding myself. I recognize that the All-Star game to a degree is a I hate to trivialize it and call it a popularity contest, but sometimes, quite frankly, it's not always the most deserving players that go. It's well, the guys who are the most popular among fans. Who's leading? The, yes, and who's leading the league in, 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 for, in the American League for catchers, for votes? Oh, for Matt Wieters. Yeah, and he hasn't, he hasn't played. played. Yeah. So, I mean, I understand that. That's how it goes sometimes. Sometimes it's not the most deserving guy out there. Now, Felix Hernandez, his manager openly campaigning for him today. Lloyd McClendon said... Felix Hernandez should start the game for the American League. He said if they want to win, they should start Felix. Yeah. End of story. Yeah. And Felix said, I'm staying out of it. I don't want to talk about it. I have no comment. Well, he's been around <laughs> enough. He's been an all-star before, and he'll probably be an all-star, you know, for the rest of his life, the way he pitches. The one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. Tomlin strikes him out. And that's his fourth strikeout of the ball game. Two down here in the fifth. Here's our great clip of the game last night. Michael Brantley with yet another outfield assist. This one probably didn't think he was going to get an assist on it. But two good throws. And they got Logan Morrison, who for whatever reason, well, didn't he made get a back mistake. to first base in time. But what he did there in that situation, he hit his cutoff map. And in, that, in turn, you make two good throws and you'll get a lot of base runners, even though he made a base running mistake. I've known you a long time now, and I think hopefully a long, long time from now, when you when you pass on, I'm going to have that on your epitaph. Hit your cutoff, man. Oh, gosh. Because that's the one thing that you have said over and over and over again as long as I've known you. Yeah, well, being an outfielder, you have to. It was pounded into my, my head religiously. It's a basic fundamental. If you're an outfielder, just hit your cutoff, man. And a lot of guys nowadays, they don't throw like guys used to. Their arms aren't as good, so it's it's priority. And here's why it was so important. If Brantley doesn't hit his cutoff, man, then he's he allow, back safe. He allows Morrison to make this boneheaded play and get back safe. Right. But you see, it's right in stride with Cabrera. It's almost like turning a double play on the infield because the outfielder, you, you're supposed to throw it to your cutoff, man, at shoulder height. And when you do that, we saw that in Arizona with uh, Gregorius when they threw out uh, Kidness yeah. at the dish. Two yeah. good throws. Well, at least I got one thing across to you. <laughs> I'm glad you remembered that. <laughs> Here's the 0-2 from Tomlin, who is pitching a dandy here tonight. Saunders, it's in the dirt. Gomes pounces on it, throws to second, but it's offline. He better not try to go to third. He will. Bourne's throw is offline, and he gets in safely. I give Seeger credit for hustling. Yeah, that is good hustling. And I think Gomes probably... Should have held on to that ball instead of trying to make a great throw. And he's going to be charged with an error. It'll be a wild pitch and an error. He hasn't had an error in a long time. He's no, been but throwing is, the ball so well. But this is just one of those you know, overly what? aggressive probably. He was doing this earlier in the year. He, he got a little crazy. That's one. Just hold on to it. Give him the one base, not the two. The one good thing about it, though, there's two outs. Now 38 games without an error for Jan Gomes before that misfire. Yeah, you see him shaking his head saying, I, I know it. I, you know what? He realized it. He's just too late. Oh, Tomlin picks him up by freezing Saunders. His fifth strikeout of the night. There you go. Boy, Josh is dealing a one-hit shutout through five.
As we go to the sixth inning. Hey, Tuesday, July 15th, it's baseball's best, the Midsummer Classic. Yes, the All-Star Game at Target Field in Minneapolis. Special coverage begins at 4.30 on Fox Sports 1, followed by the All-Star Game at 7.30, only on Fox. Carlos Santana is going to lead off here in the sixth inning. RBI double in the first to ground out his last time up. This is foul. A little bit out in front of that one, huh? Uh, a lot out in front of that one. Now the 1-1 one, one in the dirt. Boy, this is the best part of summertime. Here it is. We're in the sixth inning. It's almost uh, 9 o'clock here in the west in the sun. <laughs> Still lots of sunshine out here. And yeah, it sure is. 2-1 pitch in for a strike. That'll even the count. Gorgeous. Seattle skyline there's CenturyLink field home of the Seattle Seahawks just beyond the left field wall and that's the old home of the kingdom Santana goes down swinging just the second strikeout tonight for Elias one gone in the sixth yesterday was the 15th anniversary of the final game played at the old kingdom Place where you played many a game, and I had oh, an yeah. opportunity to cover a few ball games, especially the American League Championship Series in 1995. Yeah. What a great series that was! In fact, I remember uh, <laughs> you and I in the champagne soaked locker room after <laughs> that, and flying home with the team afterwards. Oh, God. 1 0 pitch in there for a strike. That was a, a great year for the for the Mariners even oh. to get in because they had to have a playoff game. If you remember the Angels were up by 12 games or something like that in August. It ended up coming down to one playoff game and then they ended up having to go play the Yankees and they were down 0-2 in that series before they won three to come home. They won it. They won the series on a walk off. Hit by uh, was Edgar Edgar Martinez won it right, scored uh, Ken Griffey Jr. Kipnis a tapper towards third. Seeger throws him out two away. But the Indians would prevail in that ALCS here at the Kingdom. Kenny Lofton scoring from second base. Yeah, game six. A yes, wild sir. pitch. Edgar Martinez, a beloved figure here. In Seattle Mariners lore, one of the best designated hitters to ever play the game. Well, probably. We're, we're told too that uh, this August, uh, Lou Pinella is going to be inducted into their Hall of Fame. This is the signature moment, probably, of that 95 ALCS. Little Actually, it's a pass up. ball. Yeah, it was. There's the first run coming in, and Kenny was not even stopping, and just the element of surprise. And that pretty much quieted that place down. Yeah. That was as loud as any place we've ever heard before. It's no wonder those roof tiles came crashing down <laughs> years later. That's when they first became. They said dislodged. it was an earthquake. It wasn't an earthquake. It was a fad quake. I wonder how loud that football field is over there when they get out there. Is it really loud? That they have it that they're 12th man out yeah, there. You know, you get it, into that one end zone. Yeah, it's open, but the way they've got sort of the half roof on each side, I think the noise, it just it shoots the noise right down onto the field because they say it is absolutely raucous in there uh -huh. when they're rolling. Well, they're rolling because they had some kind of year last year. Three and one to count here on Jan Gomes. And he pops it straight up back toward the dugout. Zanino 
reached over, he had it, but his manager, it. his manager blocked him out. He threw the screen on him. Skipper, get down. <laughs> look at Zanino. He's talking oh, to him. Looks I mean, you still look at it. Yeah. Look at He's got a smirk on his face. He did. He blocked him out. What are you doing, Skip? He had nowhere to go. He's got. Well, yeah, you don't get up and move. You get down. Look at him. I got it. Oops. No, I don't. I blocked my <laughs> catcher out. He's got Trent Jew and his bench coach next to him. Rich Donnelly next I to him. I hope they have a kangaroo oh, court boy. because the manager gets fined right there. He could have been out of that inning. Uh oh, Jan Gomes uh -huh. drives one deep left field. It is gone. <laughs> Gomes makes him pay. Oh, Lloyd McClendon wants to eat his hat right now. <laughs> Five nothing Cleveland as Gomes homers for the ninth time this year. See what happens when you get an extra strike sometimes. Boy, oh boy, look at Gomes. He went from being the third out of an inning to putting one more on the board for the tribe. Boy, that ball right there to hit. Fastball middle in for Gomes. Number nine. Mike Pockton telling me his last five home runs have come on the road. And that one gives the Indians a little more breathing room now at five to nothing. Look, we we can joke about Lloyd McLennan all we want. Bottom line is Zanino had that ball in his catcher's mitt. He just wasn't able to squeeze it. And that proves to be a costly second chance. Gomes and the Indians cash in big. And we'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Cleveland five. Whoopsie. Seattle nothing. <laughs> Inning. Time now for our AT&T fan photo. Remember, you can tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STO fan photo for a chance to have your picture shown during one of our telecasts. Who's the guy photo bombing him up top? It was like the DJ with the headphones. Here's Dustin Ackley. 0 for 1. He flied to right. His only time up. The Mariners through five innings have had one base runner. A leadoff single by Kyle Seeger in the fifth inning. Well, if there was anybody, I mean, if you use it as a trivia question, who has the only hit for the for the Mariners? You would have to guess Seeger, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, yeah, that's somebody automatic. was going to have it. Pop back out of play.
Rolls it over towards first. Look at Tomlin off the mound in a hurry. And he takes the feed for out number one. Here in the back in the top uh, half of the inning. Zanino unable to come up with the foul ball kind of ran into his manager over on the bench and the next pitch is gone. Yeah. How about that? For timing. He can't believe it. He's going man. I had him out and I know McClendon second cheese oh, man. What was I doing? You don't think about it at the time. But like you said Zanino had a chance to catch it. Not an easy play, mind you, if you're running over there and having to reach into your own dugout as a catcher on the run. Ah! Brad Miller takes the strike. Tomlin has been in a very good rhythm tonight. 48 of his 67 pitches have been strikes. Swing and a miss. Yeah, he's mixed it up very well. And he's kept the ball down effectively here yep. tonight. Well, for whatever reason, he loves pitching in this ballpark. Big curveball struck him out looking. A little delayed call by Marvin Hudson, and Brad Miller doesn't like it. But that's a half dozen K's now for the Indians right hander. Well, he doesn't like it, maybe because it, it, he, it was a, a, a late call. But let's see where that breaking ball is. He might have caught a break there. That ball comes down. I'm not so sure it was on the plate. But boy, oh boy, when you've been around the plate all night, you will get some calls like that. And he's saying, what, are you kidding me? Wow. Andy Chavez 0 for 2 tonight. Pitch outside for ball one. Three and no count he's had tonight. No, I certainly don't recall one. Finds the strike zone, three and one. Hits it hard to deep center. Born back on the move, and he'll make the catch. He's the big part of the ballpark. And again, the Mariners go one, two, three. Tomlin, one over the minimum through six.
are Panini's overstuffed cam. Twenty-three thousand and twelve. The attendance tonight. Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen. Right-hander Dominic Leone coming in now for Seattle. He's second among big league rookie relievers with 35 strikeouts. Well, the Indians, they had a pretty good approach to Ro Roanis uh, Elias tonight. The left-hander on the road where they have struggled, but they scored early. Came back and added on in the fifth and the sixth. Yeah, I thought uh, again, you know, he, it's not like they knocked him out of the box or tattooed him, but they strung together a couple of big hits early to get the early lead and then uh, executed really well in that fifth inning. You get a, yeah. get a guy to third, you get the 0 2 count on Cabrera, and he's able to get him home you with the sack. Yeah, you had the ball. And took advantage of their breaks, and Tom, yeah. when you give him a couple of runs early, and he just settled in. He's been dynamite. Six one hit shutout innings for Josh Tomlin tonight. Ryan Rayburn is 0 for 2. And it's outside ball one. Trying to hold up, but he went around, and it's one and one. Slow mo replay. This was early in the ball game, and this was a big play at the time on the dead run. Rayburn, he was actually off the ground. Yeah, did you see those eyes looking up there? That was uh, a great shot. That was leading off the bottom of the second for Seattle. And you know what? To be honest, that, that's the last hard hit ball in the game. I mean, there was nothing cheap about Kyle Seeger's hit, but it wasn't exactly scorched. Good play there by Seeger as he throws out Rayburn. One down. Yeah, as a third baseman, when you have to back up like that, you have to plant, and then you get to show that arm off, but he's right on the target with a good throw from third base. You just stop, plant, you don't rush. A lot longer throw than what you think. Across the diamond right there. <laughs> I just know from fantasy camp sometimes you like to have a cutoff man to make that throw. Oh yeah. <laughs> when your arms hanging, <laughs> you're barking. In the dirt, one ball, one strike. That's what I've always found interesting about shortstops, third baseman too, but mostly shortstops. The different arms that can get the job done. You you think every shortstop has to have a cannon, but Omar Vizquel, he said early on, I knew I didn't have a strong arm, but I found out ways I could compensate by using my feet to get myself in position to get rid of it quicker. Well, that's true. Avilas with a line drive base hit, his second hit of the night. Mike coming out there getting a chance to start tonight in this two for three. Good to see him back in there and getting a couple of knocks. Yeah, but you still have to have a good arm if you're going to play shortstop. It's that ball in the hole where you have to stop, plant, and throw. But there are some with a lot stronger than others. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I remember the first time I saw Nomar Garcia Parra in person. I thought, holy smokes, this guy's got the craziest arm I've seen in a long time. He could 
He can gun it across the diamond. Of course, Cal Ripken, he, he could make all the throws from different like angles. Yeah, but he was just like Omar, man. He'd yeah. get it there just in time. Yeah. You'd never see Cal leave his feet as a shortstop. Runner goes, throw down, and did he get the tag on him? Yes, he did. Two down. The ball beat him there. The only question was, could Miller apply the tag? Avila's tried to slide around him. And if if he hadn't tagged him, Mike would have popped up and yelled for Francona to come out. Well, we've seen it a lot where the uh, umpires this year, they really do. Look at they follow it all the way in and look for that tag because of the replay this year. And you, if you watch the replay, you saw him take that extra step to peek in there and make sure that he was tagged. Two down for Michael Bourne, who picked up his 20th RBI his last time up. And he strikes out to end the inning. Tribe and command here tonight. They lead it 5 to nothing. And it's time now for the seventh inning stretch. Brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Life is hard. Buying a car shouldn't be. As we go to the bottom half of the seventh, Josh Tomlin has been brilliant. No other way to describe it tonight. He's given up one base hit. He has struck out six. The hit he gave up was a leadoff single in the fifth inning to Kyle Seeger. And it was a legitimate hit. He took it the other way. And we've seen him do that a lot this year. It's why he's having a successful season. He stayed on the ball and he just hit a soft line drive into left field. But other than the line drive Seeger hit in the second inning that was caught by Ryan yeah. Rayburn on a terrific play, they haven't hit any balls hard off Josh. He has changed speeds. Interesting though, 20 batters, 12 first pitch strikes. So he hasn't always been strike one tonight. But he's been on the mark yeah. with everything. And when he has missed, it hasn't been by much. There's a good third ball. In fact, I bet if we talk to him after the game, some of those first pitch balls were on purpose. Well, they very well could have been. Jones yeah. swings and misses. Got a little piece of it, but Gomes hangs on. Strikeout number seven. As promised earlier, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Light. Here's a little sampling of Josh Tomlin tonight. Frozen. Yeah, not many pitches in the middle of the play. You will not see that. I'll tell you, he made two plays on bunts. He was able to get Jones and he had Saunders. Good curveball working tonight. Boy, and there's a fastball, locked him up. 
Yeah, he's been fun to watch. He has struck out Cano twice tonight. This time, Robinson goes after the first pitch, Change and he's two. easily retired two down. Time for another Mazda game break. Here's Al Pulaski. Five nothing Indians lead it two down and up comes Kyle Seager. Low ball one. To hit a ball and two strikes. And the one two. Couldn't get him to chase that curveball. Just a reminder, hope uh, hope to have you with us tomorrow late afternoon when we wrap up the series. It's a four o'clock Eastern time start. TJ House will make the start for the Indians, left-hander, against Felix Hernandez, who is nine and two with a 2.24 ERA this year. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Back out of play. Two two delivery. Oh, just missed outside. Tough pitch to lay off if you're Seager. That goes to show you how well he's seeing the baseball. Change up from Tomlin, and that is a teaser. It was outside, but it's a tough one to lay off. And the payoff pitch. Curveball swung out and missed. Strikeout number eight for Tomlin. And once again, the Mariners go one, two, three. He's retired him in order six out of the seven innings tonight. by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians.
Indians on top five to nothing. And we go to the eighth inning. New pitcher for Seattle is Brandon Maurer. Mariners feel like they have found something by moving Maurer into the bullpen. Now you look at his numbers and you say, ERA of over seven. But he came out of the bullpen against Boston. He was lighting up the radar gun 97, 98 miles an hour. He struck out four Red Sox hitters in two shutout innings. And here's the deal. Now that he's not starting, he can just rear back right and let it go. Well, we've seen it before with other relievers that, that are starters turned into relievers. They can go there. They're only going to throw either one inning, maybe two innings. They're not going to go around the lineup more than once, and they can let it fly and air it out until they get a uh, get used to it. They don't have to throw three different pitches. You can concentrate on two of your good ones. Now the one-two pitch. There's that 96 mile an hour fastball. Well, we're we're watching Carrasco do it. Where you know as a starter he couldn't start. This is what this guy has done, and then as a reliever, I don't know if it's a comfort zone or what. Look at that changeup. Wow. 86. <laughs> Pretty firm changeup, but when you're chucking it up there with your fastball at 96 or above, it makes it a very effective pitch. In-game box score brought to you by your Hyundai dealers. And the Indians have swung the bats well tonight. They came out out of the gate with three straight hits in the first inning, scoring a couple of runs. Two hits in the fifth led to two more runs. A solo homer in the sixth by Gomes. Yeah, four of the seven hits, extra base hits, three doubles and a home run. 97 mile an hour spins Brantley out of the way. Shortstop Miller and he runs it down two away. Well, another Sugardale Dollar Dog Night to take place Friday, July 4th. The Indians will host the Kansas City Royals. It'll be Dollar Dogs all game long. Come on out. Visit Indians.com for your ticket details. Baseball executives that are in charge of building teams and putting them together will tell you that. Hey, a pitcher that can get me 21 outs is a lot more important and valuable than a guy who can only get you three outs later in the ballgame. But there are times when you find out a pitcher's just better suited to pitch as a reliever. Maybe it's the fact he doesn't have a quality third pitch, or maybe it's uh, the fact that he runs out of gas. Uh, as the game goes on right can't go through a lineup more than twice. Yeah. Yes. So and the way the game's played today Rick you need a lot of bullpen guys. Well it used to be that if you weren't good enough to be a starter they put you in the bullpen. It's, it's simple. Because you could go out and go seven innings or nine innings. Well they don't go nine anymore or if they do they rarely do. But there's certainly an impact for relievers because it's specializing. Santana blasting one foul. You know, here's a good right hander that can throw 97. And so far, what we've seen, he's got a great change up too, which can get left handers out. So it looks like he'd be able to be successful against both righties and lefties. Oh, if you've got a good arm, they'll find a niche for you. Swinging a miss, blew right by him at 98. Two strikeouts for Brandon Maurer. Indians go one, two, three, but they lead it five to nothing.
And that couple at least uh, enjoying it here tonight. Yeah, every Indians fan in the crowd has enjoyed it. He's wearing his hat crooked. Stay tuned for Indians Live. It's coming up next, brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. Josh Tomlin going to work on Logan Morrison, Mike Zanino, and Michael Saunders here in the bottom of the eighth inning. First pitch strike. Josh Tomlin, much like Corey Kluber the other night in Arizona, giving the Indians exactly what they have needed here tonight, a quality start. This game reminds me of that game in Arizona where it was all Indians and, you know, they never scored till the bottom of the ninth in that ball game, but very, very similar. Just foul at the first baseline. What's the old saying? It takes one to know one. Seattle, very familiar with this kind of baseball because their starting pitching has been this good at times this year. Where when, when your guy goes out and shuts the other team down, I'm not saying a one hit shutout because this is this he's is special. Had, he's had almost historically good stuff tonight. But when you shut a team out, when you just don't let them score, all the pressure is off your offense. Especially when they get a couple early. It's like playing with house money. And the Indians this year have been a very good team when they score first. 26 and 14 this year when they get the lead. And they've hit the magic number tonight. Five yeah. or more. 26 and five when they score five or more. And that, that's been the problem here of late because 11 times in their last 15 games, they've scored four runs or less. And in the American League, it's just not realistic to ask your pitching staff to go out there and hold the other team to three runs every day. Yeah, it's hard to do. Yeah, you're not going to win many games if that's the case. Good pitch. Boy, Josh Tomlin just keeps rolling along. You know, Number nine. He has these guys walking back, shaking their heads. He gets it called, and look at down right there. They're sitting for something off speed. And that's about three times tonight, Matt, that I recall. He's throwing the fastball, and those guys are not looking for it. They take it, and they end up walking back. That is his third called strikeout out of the nine. Oh, he's got four. I'm sorry. I got one. I've got four. Two. I got three. I might be missing one, though. The last one, Miller, Saunders, and Cano. Yeah, Cano, first. Saunders, Miller. Yep, there you go. I missed one. Yep, one, yeah. two, three, four. Yep. Josh Tomlin has put a spell over these Mariners hitters tonight. Zanino swing and a miss, and that's strikeout number 10. Well, you talk about feeling it tonight. He is in a great groove. Poise and confidence. Yeah, and that is a season high. 10 strikeouts for Josh. It was eight against Colorado. And that's a new career high. He, uh, eight was a career high for him, so he's now at 10. Well, and for Josh, you know, coming back from the Tommy John surgery, we talked about it earlier this year. He said it's just been such a blessing to be able to go out and throw and be pain free, be able to extend, throw all of his pitches. 
I mean, he'll never wow anybody with the radar gun or his overall uh, stuff per se. He never has. But, man, he goes out and he competes from the get-go. And he may get hit around some nights, and he may get, give up some runs. That's but 11. He just continues to battle, and he has struck out now a new career-high 11 hitters tonight. Strikes out a one-hit shutout through eight. Dollar Dogs all night long. Remember now for Jeter, it's his last trip into Cleveland in his career. Retiring at the end of the year. Visit Indians.com for your tickets. Tom Wilhelmson in now to pitch for Seattle. A career high time three shutout innings pitch. Just three days ago against Boston. This guy was their closer last year. Yeah, he's become their basically their long man. He's pitched uh, three innings a couple of times this year. He struck out 30 batters in his last 19 innings of work, and Rick, in six out of his last nine innings, he's pitched two innings or more. Okay, so multiple inning guy that they extend him out now. And he is, as you said, he's he's eighth in Mariners history with 53 career well, saves. He has good stuff. He. Last year it was uh, he was on one of those games we talked about last night when the Indians came on and swept them in a four game series that he dropped the ball at first base and the Indians went on to win. Big curveball drops in for a strike. Kipnis 0 for 1. He's walked twice tonight. And a big hopper to first. One down. Revisiting our keys to the game brought to you by Akron Children's Hospital. The Indians got two hits right out of the gate. In the first inning, they were two for three with runners in scoring position. That sort of set the tone, and Josh Tomlin has been filthy. Yeah. A career high 11 strikeouts. Tom will keep it in the park. He's kept it on the infield. He hasn't let many things get out of there tonight. For Gomes, how about in his last at bat? Pop foul with two strikes and. Zanina went over to catch it, and the manager got in the way, and the very next pitch hit a home run. It's one of the, he ranks right up there with, you know, the double plays you don't turn, 
extra outs. Yeah, it's just getting a, yeah, an extra strike or an extra swing. Yeah. And it happened on the very next pitch. Josh Tomlin, he's not going anywhere except right back out on the mound. Good. Indians bullpen is quiet. Jones chops it foul. Selfishly, I'd love to see a no-hitter someday, but I, I well, you, he's got the kind of stuff tonight where we we could have had one. Well, I mean, it was it's been fun to just watch him go on and, and deal tonight. Well, you, the funny thing, if the hardest ball hit was turned into an out, and the other one he went the other way, gave up the hit. But they'll be facing that man tomorrow, King Felix. And one hit shutout, that's not exactly uh, routine. Are you kidding me? He has been unbelievable today. The Indians with only one complete game on the year, and that was Kluber against Kansas City. If you remember. Two down. Josh Tomlin struck out Robinson Cano looking to end the first inning. His strikeouts have really been clustered later, though. He struck out two in the fifth, two in the seventh, and then the side in the eighth. Yeah. You know, when at this point in the game he should be losing something. He's getting stronger, maybe getting better. It's one of those nights. He's he's got it all working, man. His side session, uh, Mickey Callaway mentioned they had to work on a few things, tweak a few things for control, and boy, his pitches have been very sharp tonight. Two down in the ninth. And Nick Swisher looks at the ball down low. He's 0 for three. It's almost like he is throwing a hit, no hitter. Nobody's talking to him. He's over there all by himself. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> he see a little smart swing and a miss. It's one and one. How many one hitters did Bob Feller throw? Twelve or thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. It was twelve or thirteen, along with three no hits. Just think it's it's just a no further illustration. My point being how. How rare and how hard it is to throw a no hitter. Yeah. The Bob Feller, maybe one of the greatest pitchers to ever play the game. That's how close he got more than a dozen times. Yeah, a dozen times it was, Mike says. The 12 one hitters. Yeah, and you, you know what? You will see one someday. I mean, we had one. We had one thrown against us, a perfect game. It was just not called. That's right. You and I were there in if, Detroit. If they for that had one. it nowadays for replay, it would have been a perfect game. Yeah. Armando Galarraga. And that was not long that long ago. What was it, 2010? Swing and a miss. Swisher goes down swinging. The Indians go one, two, three. And we'll go to the bottom of the ninth as Josh Tomlin tries to finish it off.
Conrad, Sire Express, and Total Car Care. If you missed anything from earlier in the ball game, stay tuned. Al and Jason will have the highlights. Katie, we'll talk with one of the heroes after the ball game, presumably Josh Tomlin, if he can go on to finish this one off tonight. He'd be my choice anyway. He has struck out 11, including the last four Mariners hitters in a row. Trying to finish off a one hit shutout. And it's strike one to Dustin Ackley. 99 pitches, 71 strikes. How about that? You talk about pounding the strike zone. Seventy one percent strikes to this point. And Corey Kluber had a game where he got deep and threw about 70 percent or more. Oh yeah that was against Kansas City through 101 yeah. pitches complete game. Didn't have the shutout in that game because an error was made. If you remember. Ah, yeah. But uh, hopefully Tomlin can finish this one off. And make it a complete game shutout. If not action in the bullpen. 2 1 pitch. And a foul back by Ackley. But again, it's not the pitch count you look at in a game like this because he hasn't had no. any stress, any trouble to deal with. He has just been cruising along. You can't pitch any better than Josh Tomlin has pitched tonight. So it doesn't matter. You're right. The pitch count doesn't matter. He could finish this game off. A little bit low, full count. And a 3 2 pitch. Bouncing ball to first. Tomlin off the mound in a hurry. Takes the flip, kicks the bag. One away. Tomlin has always been terrific at fielding his position. And boy, just watch him shoot off the mound as soon as the ball's hit. Yeah, well, he's proven it tonight. He's had two guys try to bunt on him that he's been able to make plays. He's had to cover first a couple of times. Uh, uh, twice uh, with Ackley, so he has uh, fielded his position very well. It's subtle right Three there too, tonight. because he is very good at fielding his position. But you might have seen Nick Swisher say, "Hey, my bad, that was a terrible yeah, flip." But yes. Josh got it as if it was no big deal. Well, I'm telling you why it was. It's probably because Swisher hasn't been out there playing first. The reason why it was a bad flip. Yeah, he hasn't been Santana's out there. Santana's been later. playing yeah. first base. The one zero. In the air, center field, Michael Dorn going back, racing back, on the track, makes the catch. Two down. Big ballpark. Give me an idea what Josh Tomlin is trying to accomplish here tonight. It's not just a one-hit shutout. Since 1914, which is as far back as we can research at the moment, he would be the only Cleveland Indians pitcher to throw a one-hit shutout Without a walk, 11 or more strikeouts, and only one over the minimum. So everything that he's done tonight, you throw it all together, no one else has ever pitched a game identical to the one he's throwing here tonight, if he can finish it off now. The 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Finish it off in style. End it yourself. I wonder if we'll see one more curveball here. Why not? It has been a dynamite pitch for him all night long. The 0 2 from Tomlin. Change up. Could not entice him to chase after. Boy, he's in such a good rhythm. He can't wait to pitch. <laughs> Do you blame him? <laughs> this has been fun to watch. The one two. And just missed. I think Marvin Hudson wanted to ring him up, but for whatever reason, didn't pull the trigger. It was a little bit outside, yep. Yeah. Here's your two two. Third ball hit on the ground towards first. Swisher has it. He'll take it himself, and the ball game is over. Josh Tomlin. With a tremendous dominant performance here tonight. A one hit shutout with a career high 11 strikeouts. 
one batter over the minimum face by Josh Tomlin. It's the eighth pitcher in the major league since 1914 to accomplish it. The first ever for the Cleveland Indians. What a job by Josh Tomlin here tonight as the Indians even the series at a game apiece with a five to nothing victory. Indians go to 39 and 41. Mariners fall to 43 and 38. With the win, Tomlin is now five and five. The loser is Broennis Elias, and he drops to seven and six on the season. Time now for our key play of the game, brought to you by KeyBank. Well, let's just stay right in the middle of the diamond and watch this gem that Josh Tom Tomlin twirled tonight. It was unbelievable. There was one ball really hit on the nose, and it was an out. But I mean. A career high in strikeouts. He had the breaking ball working. He had the change up working. He locked up guys with fastballs. He was fantastic. It was a treat to watch. And the Seattle Mariners hitters were tied up in knots. Josh Tomlin will be our key bank, key play of the game, brought to you by Key Bank. Now Josh was electric tonight. Great fun to watch him pitch. And the Indians' offense went out. Bang the ball around the yard, got him an early lead and added on to it late. They win it five to nothing, the final score. Stay tuned for Indians Live. It's coming up next. And you'll want to stay tuned for sure because Katie's going to talk with the hero of the night, Josh Tomlin.